Hello, I'm Dr. Drosty from Trident Technical College. I teach physics and astronomy here. I'm incognito at the moment because I'm wearing my protective solar goggles, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the upcoming solar eclipse on the 21st of August, uh, what you'll see, why it happens, and how not to burn your eyeballs out when you're watching it. Evildoers and naughty spawn, I am Eclipse Man. So notice that the light is now shining on the surface of the Earth, so it's noon right here. And here comes the moon, and the shadow of the moon, of course, blocks out the sunlight, and the shadow passes across the face of the Earth, and the people underneath the shadow are seeing totality. And that's how it works. So on the 21st of August in the afternoon, uh, about one in the afternoon, the actual eclipse will start, but it won't be anything that you'll notice for a while. The uh, solar disk will be obscured by the moon uh, until about 2.30 in the afternoon. It'll be nearly total, and uh, you'll, you'll see a noticeable darkening of the sky. Uh, probably the temperature will drop. Uh, turns out, you know, birds may all go quiet and the animals get kind of strange when things like this happen. There's no danger to it except by looking directly at it before it's total. Uh, you'll find that right around 240, somewhere in there, depending on where you're standing, the final bit of the sun will be covered. The, the edge may have a, a bright spot or two for a moment. It's called the diamond ring effect because the uh, edge of the moon is actually slightly irregular, so it doesn't quite cover the disk of the sun all at once. Then the, uh, the sun will be obscured. The uh, corona, the bright atmosphere of the sun, will be seen uh, around the, the, the shadow of the moon now. And uh, it, it'll be pretty eerie in, in my experience, but uh, interesting to be in. The path of totality goes across the United States, starting on the Oregon coast, about the center of the state, just south of Portland. Uh, comes east and then south, bending across the United States through Tennessee and eventually hitting Charleston. Charleston's about the last place in the United States that's going to be able to see the, the eclipse. The path of totality itself, in case there was a question, is the, uh, the, the band across which the entire sun will be covered by the moon. That's where we'll actually get a total eclipse instead of just a partial one where only part of the sun is covered by the moon places on either side, north or south of that band, will see partial eclipses, but will never get totality. I feel bad for them. If you're looking at the sun at any time when it's not completely obscured by the moon, you'll know it because it'll be bright. You need to be looking through either some glasses of this particular sort. They're just, you know, very, very dark lenses with cardboard frames because you're really going to use them kind of like once and that's okay. And then you can just wear those to look at the sun. Or you can use uh, a solar viewer, um, which uh, works about the same way. Again, completely dark. In fact, it's so dark that if you can see anything else but the sun, it's not dark enough. Make sure that's true. Or if you really are well set up or you have a welder in the family, maybe you can get yourself a welding helmet. You notice I can't see you. We are the night who say me. Using one of the filters is the, the best way, or it turns out you can build something like this. This is a, a, a viewer with a, a lens. I, I actually got this from half a pair of reading glasses. You don't look through this. The way it works is you aim it at the sun, not looking at the sun at the time, best way is to hold it over your shoulder. And then when the shadow of the box is the smallest, it turns out the sun is lined up with it. At that point, there will be a, a wonderful image of the sun on the inside of this screen. And people outside can see it as well, because this is just made of parchment paper. The one thing I, I probably should mention is that Charleston is a wonderful place, but on the 21st of August, the prediction is that we have a not quite 50% chance of having clouds that day, which means you'll be able to experience all the eerie darkening, but you won't see the sun itself. I'm sad that that's a good probability. It's a little less than half though, so be of good cheer. 
My understanding is that NASA has set up some kind of a central location for broadcasting, for streaming the whole thing, images that they'll have from uh, various places along to the path of totality. So uh, you should be able to go onto the NASA web website, nasa.gov, and uh, see whatever they're broadcasting from wherever it is that they're doing it. Just as a point of interest, it turns out that uh, we, of course, had a, a so, to, total solar eclipse in Charleston in 1970, some years ago, obviously. Uh, we have one this year, and we will get another one in about 2052. Uh, if you missed the one in 2052, there's another one, I think, in 2078. So uh, you can set your calendar for all those things. The, the important thing about this eclipse is that it's here, and not that we have to go far at all to see it. Uh, around here, it turns out uh, it'll be about 2.40 in the afternoon is when the totality will begin, more or less. It lasts for about two minutes in the Charleston area, so you don't have a long time to get out and see it. Don't miss it. It's coming. <laughs>